Hey there, this is MathCamp321. This video is an introduction to trigonometry, and we're going to be talking in this lesson about angles and their measures. Now, there's going to be a few terms that I have to define before we can get into the, the heart of the lesson, so what you might want to do is stop the video at any time to copy down those definitions. The first definition, or the first term, is standard position. What does it mean for an angle to be in standard position? An angle is said to be in standard position if it is drawn on the coordinate plane. Its vertex is located at the origin, and at least one side lies on the positive x-axis. You may have noticed that in the bottom right of the slide there is a diagram of an angle drawn in standard position. Feel free to reference this diagram at any time. The second term is initial side. The initial side of an angle is the side of the angle that lies on the positive x-axis. We call that the initial side, and I've denoted that using the color green. The terminal side would be the second side of the angle that starts from the origin and extends outward in any direction. I've denoted this side of the angle in red. Keep in mind that the terminal side, or the red side, can be rotated in any direction. The initial side, the green side, is always running along the positive x-axis. So the green side is fixed and the red side is free to extend in any direction. The fourth and final term is directional arrow, and I've denoted that with the color blue. A directional arrow is an arrow which connects the initial and terminal sides and indicates whether an angle is going to be positive or negative. Now when you took geometry, all of the angles that you studied were positive and generally ranged between 0 and 360 degrees. So it might be surprising to hear that angles can be negative, but in trigonometry they can be. And we can use this arrow to denote or to indicate whether an angle will be negative by reversing the direction of the arrow. But there will be more to follow about negative angles on a further slide. So right now all I want you to know is that negative angles do exist. So please make sure before we go on to the next slide that you've stopped or paused the video and gotten these four basic definitions down. Terrific, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so now we're on slide number two where we're asked to draw angles in standard position. The directions say draw each angle named in standard position. Use directional arrows. The first thing that I'd like you to notice is that each angle is a positive angle. On the next slide, the angles are going to be negative, and we're going to do a slightly different treatment for those angles when it comes to drawing in the directional arrow. So this slide, the angles are positive, and as a result, we're going to be using a counterclockwise directional arrow. But we're going to get to that in a second. First, because the angles are supposed to be in standard position, let's go ahead and draw in the initial side. The initial side has to run along the positive x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Great. The terminal side I'm going to draw in red and it's got to be 120 degrees. So if I were to take my pen and extend straight upward from the origin, I would only get a 90 degree angle. So I need to go 30 beyond that to get 120. Now I'm just going to eyeball this or approximate it. I'm not using a protractor or anything like that. So I'm just going to eyeball where I think 120 would be. Terrific. Now I'm going to draw in the directional arrow. To do this, I place my pen tip on the green or initial side and I draw an arrow until I hit the red or terminal side. The reason that the directional arrow is necessary is that if I didn't have one, a reader might think that this angle was intended to go in this direction like this. And that's not what I want, that would be a completely different angle. So it's important that if you want a positive angle, you start at the initial side and you go counterclockwise. We're going to get one more opportunity to practice that for the next angle, 315. So I'm going to start by drawing in the initial side, which will run along the positive x-axis. Okay, now I'm going to approximate where I feel the red or terminal side should go. If I were to sweep all the way around the circle, we know that that's 360 degrees. And I don't need quite that much. I only need 315. Well, 315 is 45 degrees less. So I'm going to come back 45 degrees and draw in the terminal side. And now I'm going to use a blue directional arrow to indicate that I want to look at this angle here, the big angle, as opposed to the little angle. 
Right now, with no directional arrow, I really don't know what the intention is, but I want 315. I'm going to start with my pen tip on the initial side, and I'm going to sweep counterclockwise until I get to the red or terminal side. So on this slide, I've given you two examples of how to draw angles in standard position when the angles were positive, and we drew our directional arrows counterclockwise. On the next slide, we'll take a look at how to draw negative angles. So now we're on the third slide, and we're going to have a very brief discussion about negative angles. The directions say, draw each negative angle named in standard position. Use directional arrows. And let's quickly look at the note at the bottom of the page. A clockwise directional arrow is used to indicate a negative angle. So the first angle that we're supposed to draw is negative 180 degrees. And I'm supposed to draw this angle in standard position. So let's start with that initial side that will run along the positive x-axis. Great. Let's now move to the terminal side, which will indicate negative 180. Well, if I went straight down, that would be negative 90. And if I went another 90, that's going to give me the negative 180 that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in the terminal side. Okay. Now for the directional arrow. If I didn't have a directional arrow, I could perceive this as either positive 180 or negative 180. But because the question asks for negative 180, I'm going to need to indicate that with my directional arrow. So I'm going to start on the initial side. This time I'm going to go clockwise, ending at the red side, the terminal side. Now let's move to example number four, where we have to draw an angle that's negative 240 degrees. Let's start with the initial side. Great. Let's figure out where negative 240 might land. Well, this would be negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and negative 270 is too much, so I need to go 30 backwards from that. So it's going to look something like this. And now I'll use my clockwise directional arrow to indicate that it's going to be a negative angle. Okay, so on this slide we talked about how to draw negative angles. The important thing being using the directional arrow in a clockwise direction, always starting at the initial side and ending at the terminal side. Terrific. Let's go on to slide number four. Okay, so now we're on the fourth slide and something really cool happens. On this slide, we're going to encounter angles that are larger than 360. When you took geometry, the largest angle you even considered was a 360 degree angle. And that would be if you had a full circle. In trigonometry, you're allowed to have angles that are larger than 360. And this is really weird for a lot of students. So the directions are the same as before. Draw each angle named in standard position. Use directional arrows. Let's jump right in. The first angle is 450 degrees. So I'm going to start by drawing in the initial side, which will run along the positive x-axis. Nothing new here. Now, how do I end this angle if it's at 450 degrees? Well, if we think about this in relation to 360 degrees, 450 is exactly 90 beyond 360. So imagine if I did a full circle, if I went all the way around, I would be facing to the right. But I need to add on another 90, which means I'm going to face straight up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw that terminal side facing straight up. Now, without having any directional arrow, this looks like it's a 90 degree angle. But I need to make it 450. So what I'm going to need to do is do a full sweep around the circle with my directional arrow, but then continue beyond it. So it's going to look a little bit like a snail. Remember, too, that the angle is positive, which means I need to go counterclockwise. Let's go ahead and draw that directional arrow now. Put your pen tip at the initial side and do a full sweep around and then one extra 90. This angle here is 450 degrees. Our next angle, bigger than 360, is 720. Let's start by putting in the initial side, which will run along the positive x-axis. Now let's think about where 720 is in relation to 360. Well, as it turns out, 720 is precisely twice 360. You might think about it as representing two full revolutions around a circle. So in this interesting case, the initial and terminal sides are going to face in the same direction. So I'm going to go ahead now and put that terminal side in. So it's a little bit of green, it's a little bit of red. It's going to be all about how I denote this with the uh, directional arrow. 
So I need to draw a directional arrow that will indicate a positive angle, which means counterclockwise, and it's going to have to go around two full sweeps to indicate a double rotation or a 720 degree angle. Let's start by putting the pen tip on the initial side and then doing two full revolutions. My only teaching tip I can give here is when you're doing these uh, snail-like directional arrows, keep them close in tight to the origin. If you make them really big and sweeping, you're going to run off the page and you're not going to have room to do it. So keep them kind of in tight towards the origin. So on the last few slides to review, we've talked about how to draw angles in standard position. Let's move on to the next slide.